Good morning, YouTubers. T Square with T Square Talk. So, I hope everybody's having a great day. Um, normally, I would have my camera and I'd have all my silver kind of spread out as we talk about the topic of the day. However, today um, I'm going to be talking about something a little different and I'm going to be showing you guys something. So, that's why I kind of have it set up so I can just instantly kind of pull it back and free up some space. Uh, before we get started, uh, taking a look at what I'm going to be showing you guys. Today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about, we've, we've done so many videos about why you buy silver. Uh, a quick 20 second wrap up, you buy silver to protect your wealth, uh, it's a hedge against inflation, same with gold. I say silver a lot, I mean gold and silver obviously. Um, it's a great hedge against inflation, it's something that big money is buying um, and I think soon everybody is going to see silver and gold as an amazing investment and more people are going to want it. Uh, why? Because it's a savings account. It's a savings account that some people say it don't pay dividends. No, it doesn't pay dividends, but it does go up in price. When I started stacking silver uh, at my low point, I was able to pick up silver at $15. On gold, at my low point, I was able to pick it up for $1,000 an ounce. Uh, not counting jewelry. I mean, I had some jewelry long before, you know, back from back when it was $400 an ounce. But it was just jewelry, and I didn't really understand why I bought it. I bought it because it was cool. Um, however, we don't talk, not many channels talk about why you sell silver, what the purpose of selling. Now, everybody knows um, that, you know, people sell for different reasons. Uh, the most common reason that we're seeing right now is because they think that prices are going to be coming down. They believe that gold is at an all-time high, which it is. Silver at another, I won't say all-time high, but it's at a, a good 10-year high, basically. Uh, we're sitting at $28 right now. Uh, with premiums, you're going to be paying anywhere from 32, right around 32 maybe, 31, 32, maybe 33, depending on your dealer or where you're buying from. I, are there going to be circumstances? Of course. I mean, I talked to someone the other day that picked up some Eagles at essentially spot. Um, you know, there's going to be circumstances. However, I'm saying the average results. And this individual, though, is actually selling for a, a reason that really, to me, makes a lot of sense um, in the terms of he wanted to buy something and essentially he didn't want to be loaning, the, borrowing the money from the bank. He wanted to borrow it from himself. And so instead of him borrowing from the bank and paying them interest, he's going to sell some of his precious metals that we're going to take a look at. I'm helping him sell these probably this week or this weekend and essentially he's going to take that money and buy the item that he wants to and then instead of paying the interest to the bank he's going to be paying it back to himself in the form of continuing to buy gold and silver now his attitude it would be great if we see a dip on it and he can buy it all back up cheaper I've explained to him it's a possibility we could see the price continue to climb however it looks to me like silver is solidifying and consolidating a little bit in the $28 area. Same with gold, we're consolidating right around the high 2300s. But a lot of big industries have um, basically revalued or re-estimated what they think gold and silver will go up to as the year comes to an end. And a lot of the new revisions are around $2,700, $2,800, which is pretty interesting because we've already had amazing growth. Um, and so it's a, you know, it's a good opportunity there. Um, but different people are going to sell for different reasons. I know I've said if I see silver hit a certain amount, I will sell some of mine down. And some people have been like, no, you never sell, you never sell. You know what? In my opinion, there's absolutely nothing wrong with taking a certain amount of profits. I know some people are against that. Um, but those same people, in some cases, may have been buying when silver was essentially $5, rode it all the way up to $50 or $48, and then seen it come all the way back down to 
what, 20? I mean, but it would have been nice if they had taken some profits early on. And I shouldn't even say 20. I should actually say, um, seen it come all the way back down to 15 because in 2000 and, uh, was it 17 or 18? We seen it really take a big dip. So, um, a, a lot of money here. A lot of a lot of wealth saved up in such a small box. When you really look at it, um, you know you've got 25 ounces of silver, or so we actually thought. Uh, there's actually 24, but he said he's going to sell one more just because he needs a set amount of money. Um, and these are pretty cool because these are your old. Um, I'll say I don't want to say vintage bars because someone might be like, 20 years is not vintage. Um, I haven't decided yet, um, if I'm going to get some of this and clean it. This one says 95. Someone actually wrote with a Sharpie on the back of it, a name, um, because it is a Christmas one. Um, but I, I don't know if that can be cleaned. Someone said you can clean them with, uh, baking soda and hot water. Um, but I don't know if that applies to Sharpie or just tarnishing, um, and some of them are not super old. There was one in here from like 1970. And the reason I know the dates on them is because some of them actually have the dates. So like 2004 Santa Claus. Uh, and a lot of people like these vintage bars. So, But no matter what, I mean, I, I tell people all the time, you shouldn't have a hard time selling this. If anybody ever, 1987... Um, pretty cool one there. I mean, that's 87. That's almost 50 years old, essentially. 20, 30, 40. Yeah, coming up on 50 years. So, and a lot of people like it. I know a lot of people like the Engelhard, um, stuff. There was one here earlier that I saw. Oh, well, now I'm not going to find it just because you can never find stuff when you want it. Um, but you know, gold and silver, it's, it's a great way to store money. I mean, if this individual had maybe had this money in his bank account, do you think it's realistic that you would save all that money? I don't believe so. Because if it, someone's anything like me, if I have extra money, I tend to be a little more frivolous with it. Maybe I'll throw it in cryptos. Maybe I'll throw it in a slot machine, buy a lottery ticket, or just really splurge and go out to eat or something fun. But if I tighten up my budget because I always put to precious metals first... It gives me the opportunity to save more, essentially. Uh, this is the Britannia, and this actually is the King Britannia. It's a one ounce. Pretty cool. Uh, it does. It might look scratched up because it has been banging around in the box a little bit, so it's just the holder that's scratched up. The coin in here is already flawless. I've already opened it up and looked at it and was extremely impressed. But the beauty is when you buy something like this, you're buying it for gold. You're not buying it necessarily as a collectible. Are there collectibles out there? Absolutely. Some people will say this is a collectible. My opinion, uh, it's it's kind of in the middle. It's, it is a collectible for most. However, personally, I would not want to collect it. Maybe I, I had a couple in the past and I ended up selling them um, because I was like, you know, I could find something better to do with my money. Uh, this is pretty cool, though, because it's the 1857 shipwreck um, that they found and recovered in 2018. And essentially, they sent it off to NGC or PCGS um, and got some of this certified. And now it's sitting in this little capsule. So it's kind of cool to have a piece of history. Moving on, um, a little tenth ounce. Not anything uh, super duper expensive or anything. Uh, a lot of people like 10th ounces because they can afford them. A lot of people won't buy. I, I just did a video the other day um, comparing one ounce versus 10 ounce. It might have not been a video. It might have been a short. Um, and a lot of people said, no, you shouldn't buy those because they have a little higher premium. However, um, if you can pick them up at a reasonably closer to spot deal, you really can't go wrong, especially if it's something that looks cool like this. Um, this is a Australian deal uh, between Australia, I think, and the United States. So, um, also we have a. We'll do that one last. We have uh, two of the five dollar gold eagles. So super cool there. 
Um, a lot of people like these. They're popular because they are eagles. And you really can't go wrong when you're buying American gold. Some people will say, oh, American gold's the safest. It's the best. Uh, you know, here's the thing. Gold's gold. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day, in my personal opinion, what gold I have. This gold is just as good as this gold. Um, so that's my thoughts on that aspect of it. Um, moving on, the tiny, tiny, little, 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 tiny, I don't even know if I can zoom in on this, bloop, 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 bloop. little gram of gold, so tiny, but even something this small, this was a funny story actually, so the person that got this, that is selling this off now, um, that I'm helping him, he actually works at a business. He goes to the bank all the time and buys change for the business. And under the flap of the box, if I had an empty box here, I would show you guys. But in the bottom of a change box, in the bottom of a box, there's flaps sometimes that fold down. And the lady's like, do you need a box to put all your coins in? He's like, yeah, if you got something, anything's fine. It can be whatever. And he goes, oh, that's okay. Here you go. And then gave him the box. And when he got back to the shop, he's counting out the change. And instead of throwing the box in the trash can, he breaks the box up so it doesn't fill his whole little office trash can. And out pops this bad boy. So kind of cool. Obviously, someone was a small stacker. Um, and ended up having that and unfortunately lost. And that's the downside about having really small stuff. Uh, it does get lost easy. This actually, me and him have traded this back and forth a few times. Uh, neither one of us really were that big on it at the time because at the time, these weren't even 50 bucks. Well, now you're talking $75 um, as the price continues to climb. And the last item here that I'm going to show you guys is this tiny little 2014, I think. I think it's a 14. Panda. Yep. So this is the old style Panda. It's only 1 20th of an ounce. It's been banged up a little lot. Um, but still pretty cool. Uh, gold is gold, and you really can't go wrong having gold, in my opinion. I think it's 14. Hard to get that perfect zoom. It might be 2004. My eyes ain't even that good to even be able to see it. Um, but still, gold, and you can't really go wrong when you're buying gold and silver. Um, it's a great way to save your money. It's a great way, in my opinion, to basically store your wealth. And as inflation continues to climb, I believe gold and silver will climb. And as gold and silver continues to climb, you'll have a certain amount. Maybe you can pull one of these out and use it for trade, um, for food if you ever needed to, for gas, for whatever you may need. Some people will tell you you can't eat the stuff. You know what? There's a lot of things you can't eat, but preppers keep on hand. And eventually, you're going to need it, I think. Gold and silver has always been money, and it always will be money. Even if people believe that money is now fiat paper or cryptocurrencies or whatever the case may be. So with that being said, thank you for watching. I hope you hit the thumbs up button. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you guys next time on T-Square Talk. Take care everybody and have a great day.